What would it take to, for the whole world to think the same? It's about finding common ground. This is a challenge that is addressable. If we can get all the stakeholders to talk and march forward in the right direction together, it's the patients who will benefit. That's what it's all about. Good afternoon again, Prof. This is the fun episode. Now, N1 is doing many, many, many things. And we've covered its importance in medicine, its importance in drug combinations, its importance in oncology and infectious diseases, and particularly COVID because it's relevant. Let's talk about what else and where else you want to go with N1? I think one of the areas we're most excited about right now is the use of our AI platforms to address uh, cognitive impairment. Uh, and the way we're doing it is using a gaming platform, actually. And so um, multitasking is something that can be studied using very simple computer games, actually. Um, where you have four tasks being assigned, and if we can change the intensity of each task dynamically, we can start to personalize how we provide multitasking training to users with the potential of looking at preventing cognitive impairment or, or at least uh, challenging the onset of that impairment. I'll share a personal story. Uh, so, so my wife, uh, after we moved here several months, uh, was diagnosed with a brain tumor. Mm. Um, and it was a shock to us yes. because, you know, first of all, her, a brief background about her, she has a PhD in neuroscience, actually, oh. and uh, switched fields into fashion design, had her own fashion line, showed at New York Fashion Week, LA Fashion Week. And then one day I come home and she's laying on the ground, right? And uh, she, was, she was not unconscious, so she, she told me she couldn't stand up. And so we, we got her to the A&E, and, um, and then a bunch of clinicians came and saw her, and they had her imaged. And that, the very next morning, they found a, a, a sizable, about five centimeter tumor in her brain. And she immediately had aggressive surgery, and then after that, uh, she had aggressive radiation therapy. Mm. Um, and from during that process, you know, first of all, we, we've talked a lot about collegiality, about collaboration. The community that I work with overnight, they said, Dean, you take care of your kids, we will take care of your wife. This was in Singapore? This was in Singapore. Okay. And at that moment, the Singapore ecosystem here became our family, mm -hmm. overnight. These collaborators who I've worked with for years on oncology, infectious diseases, et cetera, immediately became our family. And they saved my, my wife's life. They helped us get back on our feet. And during the, the course of learning about what patients go through, radiation therapy, what some long-term side effects can be, we've certainly learned about how whole brain radiation, so my wife was more targeted, but whole brain radiation can lead to cognitive decline. Um, chemotherapy can lead to cognitive decline. Aging as well. We wanted to develop a simple to use platform involving gamification to help try to combat cognitive decline. But the platforms we use don't, in this case, doesn't involve a drug, right? It involves software. Yes. And instead of changing the drug dose, yes. we change the intensity of the training so that we can use this to personalize mm -hmm. multitasking training to potentially combat cognitive decline. Because when we think about long-term outcomes, if someone's under treatment, um, et cetera, the ability to, to, to suppress this decline may very well likely have better outcomes for other conditions as well for these, for these subjects. And so that's something we, we are very passionate about. Uh, it's personal for us as well. And so um, we're using our AI platforms. And, 
and uh, we're about to start a clinical trial on that, probably in the next couple of weeks. No, I think, I think that's excellent because immediately all the applications come, dementia, autism, the whole spectra. Absolutely. And I think um, that's correct. Use it or lose it. Well, yeah. and when we think about cognitive training, there are many inputs, right? Yes. If we think outside of drug treatment, you know, if we think about all the different inputs when, when, when we think about cognitive training, there's gamification, music, yes. other art forms, other ways to serve as an input to this user that we can apply to our Curate AI platform, right? Because we look at these as inputs, not only as just drugs and dosages, but gaming inputs. Give gaming us a intensity. couple more examples. Sure. Um, another area that interests me is, uh, is personalized prenatal care. We're working with a team to look at a device that can, among other things, um, predict preterm birth. And the objective here might be to potentially reduce unnecessary hospital visits for expecting families. Mm -hmm. The other element is to look at using some of these devices to measure uh, maternal stress before birth. You know, many landmark studies done here have looked at the impact of things like uh, stress, for example, on long-term child development, et cetera. And so we would love to play a role in helping the births that do happen in Singapore, uh, helping to make them healthier. Mm -hmm. And so we have wonderful collaborators here, leaders in the field that we're working with to look at how we can harness digital technologies like wearables, mm -hmm. coupled with our AI, to find um, more information about, to, to be more informative mm -hmm. to these expecting families and to researchers mm -hmm. so that we can look at potentially managing maternal stress before birth. Mm -hmm. Again, we want the births that happen here to be healthier, right, for the community. And so we're excited about that one too because again, our platforms, it's not only oncology, it's not only infectious diseases, there are so many areas we can help. How about metabolic condition? I mean, how about diabetes, hypertension? Yes. Do you look at that, that sort of area and how do you? Yes. yes, in fact, this probably sums up one of our greatest aspirations. A is to first understand what the patients are going through, mm -hmm. right? So when we develop therapies, other strategies to really make it patient-centric, mm -hmm. patient-personalized, patient-centric, and what I want to do as a team is to develop combination therapies against diabetes that, again, are optimized for populations. And when this is done, we want to gift the rights to this combination away to Singapore for free. Yet again. But yet again. <laughs> we, this, is a, this is a challenge that is addressable. Yes. We're actually already engaging in all the discussions in terms of identifying which therapies mm -hmm. to look at. Diabetes is a pervasive challenge that is very hard for the patients and their families. Mm -hmm. And this is a challenge I know that we can address. Mm -hmm. And when that is done, give the rights away. We, it, th we want to make this widely available to the community in Singapore, again, mm -hmm. to reduce the cost of care. Chronic illness accounts for a major portion of healthcare mm -hmm. costs mm -hmm. in any healthcare system. Mm -hmm. We want to you know, cut the cost of care, get better outcomes for families and patients. Mm -hmm. And we want to make that freely available. Mm -hmm. And we'll publish all of our findings so that as many people can, can benefit from this as possible. This is slightly different. This is like a AI organized mass chronic disease platform. Yes. yes, it's not quite personalized and yet it is uh, completely applicable to the masses. Yes, uh, N1, what we typically focus on is we are contacted often by patients from uh, UK, US, uh, India, um, Australia, etc., all over Asia, uh, to see if we can help patients with their care using our AI to individualize their treatment. Wisdom, uh, we look at harnessing our digital platforms to make what we call population-optimized yes. medicine. Yes. Um, population-optimized in terms of if we come up with a combination therapy, chances are the drugs that belong in that combination are very different than the ones that traditional drug mm. development will pinpoint. Mm. And our goal is to come up with these optimized regimens which won't be as personalized yeah. but are much more broadly yeah. deployable yes. to the masses. Yes. Yes. We're looking at both. N of one medicine, which is truly individualized. We designed the trial just for the patient. And the other one is, can we help as many yes. people as possible? How about 
you know, when you look at special needs, when you look at um, populations that we make use of music therapy, art therapy, play therapy, could we demonstrate that these are actually infective and in, in which areas could, could we actually use your platform and look at things like that? To, to kind of sum up how we implement our platform, it's all about inputs and outputs and the subject in between. Inputs can be drugs, they can be games, um, and they can be, for example, other forms of therapy, right? Um, then you have the subject, and then you measure the outcomes. The outcomes in oncology is often tumor burden. Yes. The outcomes for infectious diseases, viral or bacterial load. Um, the outcomes for cognitive impairment includes scores of yeah. the games yeah. that we use. So as long as we can quantify what the input is, yes. it can be the duration of therapy, yes. it can be what the exact type of therapy is, yes. that's your input. Yeah. And if we can quantify the output mm during each point in time that we change the intensity or, uh, or whatnot of the input, we can then proceed to develop patient or subject specific mm. profiles. Mm. And again, it's gonna be different for between every yes. subject. Yes. And even the same subject will evolve over time. If we make it more dynamic, mm. right? And we kind of you know, challenge the, the complex system here and then eventually personalize that intervention I've, I'm, I'm confident that we can apply a diverse range of inputs to help people. What would you and your team love to do to impact the world? Because there's so many arenas you can look at over the next five to 10 years. The one major, if I had to sum up all the issues confronting healthcare, I think one of the most pervasive issues is the rising cost of healthcare. And this is something that's happening everywhere in the world. Our goal is to dramatically optim or increase yeah. or enhance or eventually optimize that healthcare outcome while also cutting the cost of care. I want accessible and optimized healthcare to be available for everybody who needs it. There is a way to make the best therapies possible very inexpensively mm -hmm. and get them to people faster. Mm -hmm. There is a way to individualize treatment without breaking the bank. Yes. There is a way to address both ends of the spectrum. Within the next if five to 10 years, if we could prove that we can, we can move the needle there and have people with their loved ones longer, improve quality of life for severe illness, right? address chronic disease in a comprehensive fashion, we'll be happy with ourselves. One area that I think many of us would love you to focus on is prevention. The why in the first place, people are having chronic diseases that we didn't see 100 years ago. It's a complex question. It's a complex question. But, you know, if some of us could look at that side of the coin, that would actually be pretty good. Um, and, and maybe you can help us with that one. You know, we have investigators in N1 we actually are getting uh, some you know, really neat studies started up looking at more preemptive management of health yeah. so people can live healthier longer, yeah. right? And so health span, as we say, right? And so we have an amazing aging research community as well, not only looking at how to address existing challenges, but to prevent onset of others. Yeah. And so it takes a community to get this done. My last question is, what would it take to, for the whole world to think the same? Stakeholders, engagement, if I just give you a wish list. It's about finding common ground. Yeah. It's about finding common ground where we know everybody wants uh, what's best for patients, yeah. right? And I think it's important when engaging stakeholders to find that common ground so it's not about uh, shunning one discipline for another. It's not about saying that one's own discipline or method is the best, yeah. because it's gonna take a collection yes. and seamless integration of different technologies, different policies, yeah. uh, very diverse know-how to really transform the way that medicine is practiced. This interplay of disciplines will be absolutely vital. And it's for that reason why I'm here. It's for that reason why 
we've been able to work so well with all of these communities. And so we're the lucky ones. We always know the patients are the heroes here. The patients are the ones putting in the hard work. If we can get all the stakeholders to talk, you know, collectively and, and march forward in the right direction together, it's the patients who will benefit. That's what it's all about, right? And so every, every study we design, every idea we have, we start off by trying to engage as many stakeholders as we can, because in the end, technology alone is not enough to transform healthcare. With the COVID happening, this is really the time that we start looking at everything that's affecting humanity and going about it in a rational way with AI platforms and the engagement of the specialists in those areas, as well as the international community. That's right. And I thank you so much. You, you, you started doing this and keep on doing this in, in Singapore. It's, it's a real privilege. Thank, thank you, you for so having much. me. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.